So the Youth Vote UK was a campaign that I set up um, a couple of weeks ago now, and it is essentially to positively engage uh, young individuals around the country. Our aim was to get them registered to vote, and now that that deadline has, has, has come and gone, I think it's now about engaging with them, understanding what makes them vote, see what, what things that they're bothered about in terms of like things that are happening in the country, policies that gets them interested, things like that. So yeah, it's about positive engagement. All right, sweet. Like, why, when did you actually decide to, to, to come up with the project and what, what inspired you to go ahead and go through with the youth vote? Because obviously it's a big campaign. What I noticed is young people don't vote. Now, I know 43% is still quite a lot of young people that voted. That's quite low because actually that's 43% of, of eligible people in the 18 to 24 year old bracket that voted. So still there's more people on top of that that weren't eligible because they didn't register to vote that voted, so, that did vote, sorry. So I decided at the SNAP general election, I thought, you know what, I really wanna make a difference this time to my generation in terms of like my age bracket. And I thought, how could I do that? So I started to contact, you know, my friends, told my family, um, started to contact like, other student offices around the country, and then we kind of took it from there, really. And here we are. <laughs> so obviously we, we've seen now how many people have Registered yeah. to vote. How many young people have registered to vote? Mm -hmm. uh, are you satisfied with the number of people that have registered their vote? Of course, we don't know how many are going to turn out just yet. But mm -hmm. are you satisfied with the with the number of eighteen to twenty four year olds who have registered to vote? And are you satisfied with the campaign so far? I think the numbers are significantly up. It's been a really really positive campaign. I think the country as a whole has responded very well. Um, we saw on the last day, on, on May 22nd, 246,000 18 to 24 year olds registered to vote. That's a quarter of a million, just on one day. So, and in the five days before, there was around 600,000 18 to 24 year olds registered to vote. That's significantly up. That's up by about 35% wow. on 2015, in terms of the run up to the registration uh, deadline. It's really good. Yeah, I'm really happy with how it's going so far. But I'll be more happy if actually on June the 8th, the percentage, the turnout percentage of 18 to 24 year olds is around 60%, if not higher. You know, 43%, like you rightly said, is, is not good enough at all. Um, and I think, hopefully, all of this hard work and all of the positive um, f feedback we've got so far will actually materialise into people voting and being informed and being empowered to feel like this is their election. And that's why I'm starting a hashtag that says that the youth vote matters, because it does matter. So yeah, no, I'm feeling good. Really good, yeah, I'm pretty pumped. Why do you think it is that the youth vote now does seem to matter a lot more? Why do you think it is that, that people are turning up and why do you think that young people are more engaged in this election than in 2015? I think things are starting to hit them that really hit home. So I think, let's talk about students to start with. So students at universities are, are being told by their universities that certain things are gonna have to change. Like even here at Coventry, we know that some tuition fees are going up, we know that some projects that were funded by the European Union and the university combined are being scaled back. Things are actually hitting them. They think, gosh, politics does affect me. People that are just leaving college, university places are being affected because of international students, like the caps being on there and universities not wanting to take as many students as they did before. And young people are really feeling that the whole country, the NHS, is, it, is in a dire strait at the moment. So they're actually starting to feel like, gosh, politics either affects me directly or indirectly affects a family friend or a family member or someone I know. So I think that's why finally the message is starting to get through. We're not there completely. There are still people that don't think that they need to vote, but we're getting there, definitely. Why do people need to vote? Why, why, why should someone who's living in a, in a Labour constituency, which is, has always been Labour, mm. or someone who's living in a Tory constituency who's always voted Tory, why, why, do they, why is there a need for them to actually turn up and vote? on the day because, well, if there's thousands of people uh, difference every single election, then what's the point? Well, our ancestors fought for us to vote. There's been years of uh, social stigma around young people being politically unsavvy, us not knowing what we're doing. And we need to change that. We need to vote. And yeah, there might be seats that are ridiculously, you know, in terms of the majority, there might be like, why on earth am I gonna vote? But actually, at the moment, there's about 12 seats that have a majority of only 500. And there's about 28 seats that have a majority of less than a thousand. Now, there's been seats all around the country that have changed hands, right? Look at Richmond Park, that was a by-election. 
Yeah, all right, it was, it was a, a by-election, but regardless, it was a seat and, and it changed hands. There was a 23,000 majority for a Conservative candidate and it went to a Lib Dem, right? In Twickenham, there was a majority of about, what, six, 7,000 to the Lib Dem. It changed hands, went to the Conservatives. Seats change hands all the time. If you, and you don't believe me, you can look at the data, but actually people need to understand that even if there's a majority of 10,000, it could change hands very easily because young people have power. Because we didn't vote, like the percentage of young people voting was quite low. If it's a lot higher this time, the people that you really want to see in, in power can be in power if you vote. But I think the most important thing is you just need to exercise your democratic right because there are children around the world that would love to vote would really want to vote and be involved in a democracy and unfortunately they can't because of various different reasons. You're lucky enough to live in a country that has a functioning democracy. Make the most of it and exercise your democratic right and vote. Now the youth vote is obviously a campaign which is encouraging young people to basically come out and vote. Mm. Get there on the day, turn up. But that, that's the message now obviously because everybody's already registered. 100%, yeah. Right. Is it an endorsement to any particular party? Because you know some, some young voters might, might well think that uh, you know, one particular party might resonate with the youth more? No. Let me make this 100% clear. This isn't about the Labour Party, the Lib Dem Party, the Green Party, the Conservative Party. It's not. If I wanted to do that, I very easily could have, you know, put myself with other individuals in that party and done a campaign. And, and I can assure you it would have been a lot easier. Because if you're part of a political party, you get funding very easily for campaigns, people get behind you because you're part of their movement. I did it on my own, and it's not about any political party. If you look at our social media, we've been unbiased. We've just given factual information. This is about engaging young people. All right, yeah, there's going to be criticism, of course, that young people, if we get a lot of young people to vote, they're not going to vote for the Conservative Party. Well, historically, that's true. But one, we don't know how people are going to vote. And actually, when I've been travelling the country, I found that around 30% to 35% of people I've spoken to, or people in my campaign have spoken to, are undecided. So how on earth anyone can make any judgments about, you know, this is the campaign trying to get this party elected is ridiculous. We're about engaging 80s, 24-year-olds, positively engaging them. We were about getting them registered to vote. We've done a very good job now. 600,000 in the last five days, over 1.1 million in the last week. It's a lot. The numbers are up. But now it's about engaging with them. But no, Daniel, it's not about a political party at all. All right, well, this election so far, mm. from what I've seen in polls, which I, I, I know you can only take with a pinch of salt, it, they seem a lot more malleable than, than the last few elections. Mm. If there is an election to make a difference, if there's an election to go out and vote, surely it is 2017. 100%. 100% because this is, we're voting in very different circumstances to what we voted in 2015. Of course, every general election is important, but why this is so important is you don't have a referendum every five years, you just don't. So this is the first time we've had a referendum in over 40 years. Now young people need to understand that this isn't just about the next year or two years, this is about how our country will function outside the European Union in terms of how we're going to trade and work and collaborate with all 27 other EU countries, uh, member states. So this is the most important election that, that there's been in many years. One thing that we, we've spoken about mm. is that a lot of the party's policies are targeted towards an older generation. So if people want their vote to count in the future, they need to get out and vote now. Yeah. Even if they don't think it's going to make a difference. Yeah. And I think 100%, I think, unfortunately, what's happened for years and years and years is because the, the young people in our country don't tend to vote or the numbers that we see from that age bracket don't, don't tend to be as high as maybe 60 plus. Mm. Yeah, of course, think about it from your perspective. If you were running a party, you'd be mad not to prioritise certain policies that are going to appeal to uh, an age bracket which votes in its drove, so to speak. So... If young people start to vote, and they start to vote in their droves, they start to really vote in their numbers, then policies that affect them will start to materialise much quicker. Why? Because there'll be a lot more pressure at the ballot box, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like, if a lot of young, if young people vote in their droves, then it'll be more important. Yeah.